my children in previous class we completed the topic related to tanks from lesson 3 that is tanks and ground water in previous class what we discussed how did the tanks helps us and the kings our uh, military leader leaders and naikas these all how did they build tanks these all we completed in previous class so how did they build tanks see here for example this is one river so one side of the river they built one strong wall so across the river they built one strong wall so here one large lake could be formed the one side of the river how they built this uh, strong wall by using sand rocks and mud so here they can store rain water this water they are used for cultivation purpose and uh, drinking purpose here the tanks provide water to the animals and the birds and human beings also and the tank water helps us to irrigate the lands and uh, it can stop the soil erosion and tanks helps us to increase the water levels near wells like that the tanks helps us to us but nowadays these tanks are declining or decreasing why what's the reason because number of farmers they are using deeper tuber wells nowadays instead of tanks they are using deeper tuber wells or bore wells means they are drought water by using mortars so nowadays the tanks are decreasing or declining that too nowadays there are no kings and the queens to build the tanks and to repair the tanks so no one is there to build the tank and to repair the tank so we are seeing nowadays dry and uncared tanks and next already i said in previous class that is rocks we have two types of rocks what are they pervious rocks and impervious rocks pervious rocks pervious rocks means which have cracks and pores pores means holes and it can contain water so pervious rocks means pervious rocks have cracks and pores and it can contain water for example sandstone in our prakasam district next impervious rocks the rocks do not have cracks and pores and it cannot contain water we call as impervious rocks here the rocks have cracks and pores so it can contain water through the cracks and pores the water goes into the deep land so the pervious rocks have contain water it can contain water but here the impervious rocks do not have cracks and pores so it cannot contain water but the ground water accumulates above such rocks means the ground water accumulates above the impervious rocks where we can find this impervious rocks in karpa district that is granite and limestone so where it is located karpa district in rayal seema so in rayal seema in karpa district we can find granite and limestone they are called uh, impervious rocks they do not have cracks and pores so it cannot contain water next uh, aquifer aquifer means the layer of water under the ground where we can find aquifer under the ground so what is meant by an aquifer aquifer means that is the layer of water which accumulates under the ground among the rocks and pebbles we call as 
aquifer. For example, see this diagram. This is aquifer. Aquifer means the layer of water. Here, at a uh, five meters below only, we can find the water level. And see this diagram. Here, the water level is the same in all the wells. And this water level it goes deeper in summer season and it will come up in rainy season. And this groundwater is mixed with the many minerals. So, in some places we are getting salty water and in some places we are getting sweet water. Where we can find salty water very near to the seas and the oceans we are getting salty water. And where we can find sweet water it is very near to the rivers, ponds and lakes in that places we are getting sweet water. Why? What's the reason? Because in some places uh, excess quantity of minerals dissolved in some places. So in that we are getting salty water. In some places the minerals dissolving percent is low so in that places we are getting sweet water. These minerals all are come from rocks and soil under the ground. So these minerals are mixed with the water so the taste of the water will change. In many mandals in our state contain excess quantity of minerals. For example sodium, chloride, fluoride and nitrate and iron etc. If we drink such type of water we may get different types of diseases like cholera and diarrhea. They are the water related diseases and if we drink such type of water it can affect our bones and teeth also. So it is very dangerous. So you should not drink such type of water. And next, water pollution. The water is polluted by the fertilizers and pesticides. Here the water is polluted due to heavy use of fertilizers and pesticides. And the water is polluted by the drainage system. Because every day we are releasing more water through the drains. So the water will pollute you. And the water is polluted by the animals and human beings also. Every day in the village people, they are washing their clothes very near to the rivers and uh, uh, they bath their cattle also. So the water will pollute. We are very near to the rivers. And next, the water is polluted by the industries and the factories. Industries and factories also, they are releasing more chemicals into the rivers through the, through the drainages. So, here also the water will pollute. And most of the water in wells and rivers polluted due to these industries and the factories. And in some places, they are getting more water than the recharging rate. So, the water goes down half to 2 meters every year. So, groundwater is the common resource we have to use in a restrained manner. Otherwise, our future generations will fight for water. And today's generation, water received from our ancestors. Says or no? Ancestors means our forefathers. So today's generation water received from our ancestors. So we also should give to our future generations what is that water. So we have to use it restrain it.